In this video I'm going to look at some relevant mathematics to complex numbers and I'm also going to follow it up by looking at Python programs that express some of the ideas we need when dealing with complex numbers. In the previous video we looked at how we can square numbers and raise numbers to a power and here you can see I have 4 raised to the power of 2, in other words 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. And then of course we can take the square root of 16 and show that it is indeed 4 because if I take this 4 and multiply it by 4 I get the 16 that appeared within the square root. If we look at another example which is shown here 7 squared well that is simply 7 times 7 which we know to be 49. Now if I was to ask the question what's the square root of 49 well we are looking for a number such that when that number is multiplied by another number with the same value we get 49 and of course we can see here that 7 times 7 gave us 49 so we can go on to say that the square root of 49 is clearly 7. If we look at another example here we can see I've got 21 squared now that is equal to 21 times 21 and when you calculate that you will find you get 441 and of course now we can ask the question well what's the square root of 441 and the answer is clearly going to be equal to 21. Now something we're going to find useful when we're manipulating complex numbers can be shown as follows. Here you can see that the square root of 16 is equal to 4. But what you can do, you can take this square root of 16 and you can write it out again as shown here. You can have within the square root brackets 4 times 4. Now obviously 4 times 4 is 16, which is what I've got here. So what I've really done, I've taken this 16 and I've split it into 4 times 4 and I'm taking the square root of it. We now can write this as shown here. We can take the square root of 4 and the square root of 4 separately and multiply them together. Now the square root of 4 we should know is 2. So what we will go on to show is that this is equal to 2 times 2. Because the square root of this gives us 2 and the square root of this gives us 2. And of course here we can see we're multiplying together. So here we have to multiply together. And of course 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Which is what we said here. That the square root of 16 is 4. Let's consider another example shown here, the square root of 81. Now the square root of 81 is 9, because 9 times 9 gives us 81. But what we can do, we can rewrite the square root of 81 as you see here. We can say, well, 81 is 9 times 9, and we take the square root of it, and now we can split the square root up as shown here the square root of 9 times the square root of 9. Now of course the square root of 9 is 3, so we end up with this being 3 times 3, which we can show is equal to 9. Now you will see a little bit later in the playlist that the ability to split up a square root as shown here will be important for our understanding of complex numbers. Now changing tack slightly, I want us to consider this. If x squared is equal to 16, how do we find the value of x? In other words, what value of x can I put here that will satisfy the fact that when it's squared it'll give us 16? Well, let's write it out here. And one of the things I want to do, I want to get something here where we end up with something equaling 0. Now, I can achieve that by taking 16 from both sides. So let me show you the steps involved there. If I consider x squared and I take 16 from it, what well, I will get this. I'll get x squared minus 16. Of course, what I can now do, I can say that is equal to, and of course I now take from 16, 16. And naturally, 16 minus 16 will give us 0. So what I have here is something I can use, and what I will do to this is to factorise it. Now there are many different ways to factorise, and I'll let you look at those. I'm just going to show you one way here, and the idea is to put this into two brackets, and make those two brackets equal to 0. So I will show you the result of factorising, as you can see here. Now the question I need to ask is, how do I get this? How did I get to this point? Well, I had to choose two things to go here and here. And when those two are multiplied together, they have to give me x squared. And of course, it's x in both cases, because x times x 
is x squared. I then had to think, well, how do I get 16 here? Or more to the point, how do I get minus 16? Well, I put here and here two numbers that when multiplied together will give me minus 16. And you can see I've chosen 4 because 4 times 4 is 16. Then I had to decide what the signs were in front of the 4s. And I chose a minus in front of this 4, a plus in front of this 4. Because a minus times a plus is a minus. So minus 4 times plus 4 is minus 16. Of course, is this correct? Does the multiplication out of this give me this back? Well, let's have a look to see if it does. The first thing I need to do is to consider this multiplication here, x times x, and that will give me x squared. The next thing I need to do is to say, well, what does this x give me when I multiply it by plus 4? Well, I get plus 4x. I now turn my attention to the minus 4 and I ask what will I get if this minus 4 multiplies the x and of course I'll get minus 4x as you can see here. Now I need to look at what's minus 4 times plus 4 and the answer is clearly going to be minus 16 and of course this lot then equals 0. Of course if you consider these two you've got plus 4x and minus 4x. So you can regard those as cancelling out. In which case you end up with this. x squared minus 16 equals 0. Showing us that this must have been correct. Let's remind ourselves what we're attempting to do here. We're attempting to find a value of x which satisfies this. Which I've shown here. What can I find for the value of x such as uh, I square that value and I get 16. So to achieve that I'm interested in this here these two brackets and the fact that those brackets equal zero. So let's remove most of the calculations you can see in front of you and let's just concentrate on the brackets. So I'll remove the calculations and I'll put the brackets here. Now the content of this bracket when multiplied by the content of this bracket will give us zero. That's what we're saying with this line here. So what we can go on to say, well, which bracket is zero? Well, the answer is we could make this bracket zero. And whatever this is, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be multiplied by this bracket, which we've shown to be zero. And anything multiplied by zero is clearly zero. Alternatively, we could arrange for this to be zero. And this will take up whatever value it may have because we end up with whatever this is multiplied by zero, which will still give us a result of zero. So I can take each bracket in turn and say that they equal zero. So this equals zero, or I can come along and say, well, let's make the other bracket equal to zero. Either of these will give us a solution. If I concentrate on this, I need to isolate x. I need to get x by itself, so it's x equals something. And of course, I've got to get rid of this minus four. Now, to achieve that, I have to add plus 4 to both sides because if I add plus 4 to this side of course the 4s will go to 0 they'll effectively cancel and you'll be left with x on this side but if I add 4 to this side to balance the equation I have to add 4 to this side so I end up with this x is assigned plus 4 having found out that x equals plus 4 I have another way I can carry on with this bit of mathematics and I can say or I consider this here and what I need to do I need to isolate on this side x and to achieve that I would subtract from this 4 because plus 4 minus 4 will be 0 and of course I'll have an x on this side of the equal sign and of course if I'm going to subtract 4 from this side I need to subtract 4 from this side so I end up with x is equal to minus 4. So the factorization process I have just shown gives us two possible results to satisfy this. One when x is plus 4 and one when x is minus 4. So let's think about whether this is sensible. Well, if I come here, I'm squaring x. And if I make x plus 4, plus 4 times plus 4, which is what x squared means or what 4 squared means, is 16. If I come here and I use minus 4 and I plug minus 4 here, for the x, 
I end up with minus 4 squared, which is minus 4 times minus 4, and a minus times a minus is a plus, and 4 times 4 is 16, so it also satisfies this. So it looks like I have two answers here for the possible values of x. x can be plus 4, and x can be minus 4. Now I've just shown how using factorization we can find the value of x to satisfy x squared equals 16. And we found that there were two answers, x equals plus 4 and x equals minus 4. Now I'm going to show another way here that will find one of those values. And this approach we're going to find useful for when we look at complex numbers. Now the steps we're going to take are shown here. We take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of x squared and we say that's going to be equal to and because we've taken the square root of x squared we clearly have to take the square root of the 16. Now let's consider this here. What is the square root of x squared? Well it is simply x and we'll check that that's the case a little bit later in this video and of course we can say that we have to now take the square root of 16 and of course the square root of 16 is 4 so we end up with x being equal to 4. Of course we know through factorizing that there is in fact another value and that value is minus 4 but I'm happy with this at the moment. What I would like to do now is to look to a Python program that will show to us that the square root of x squared indeed is x. Of course our knowledge of mathematics would show us that the square root of x squares was x and if you wish to remind yourself of the result the square root of x squared equals x then I recommend if you've forgotten to go and look at indices and remember that the square root of a number is that number raised to one half or raised to 0.5. Now this is something I'll be coming back to later in the playlist but I simply want you to bear in mind that the square root of x squared will always be x. Let's now consider this snippet of Python code and you can see here that I've imported the math module. Now I need to do that because you'll see later that I'll be taking the square root of a variable. On this line I've let x be assigned 4, so x is now the name bound to the integer object 4. Here you can see I'm using the operator to raise x to the power of 2. So this will calculate x squared, which is 4 times 4, which is 16. And that 16 is assigned to this variable that I've called x squared. And I've called it x squared, x underscore squared to be precise, because it's going to be holding the squared value of x. If we turn our attention to this line, you can see here that I'm using the math module and the square root function, and into the square root function I am passing x underscore squared. And what this will do, it'll take the square root of x underscore squared, and it'll assign that to here, which is the square root of x squared. Of course, the variable names I've chosen for this snippet of code are a little bit too elaborate, but you can see I've chosen them just so we can explain what's happening with this rather small snippet of code. So going back to this line, we can see that what this will do, it'll take the x squared, which we know was calculated on this line to be 16, and it's going to take the square root of it. And of course, the square root of 16 is 4. So this now will be assigned 4, which is the square root of x squared. What this line will do, it'll use the f string to output what we can see in the runtime shown here. So we can see this string is placed here, the square root of. This refers to the value stored in the variable x, which we can see here is 4. Consequently, 4 is placed here. And here you can see we're putting the value of the square root of x squared, which we found from this line, that this was given the value of 4. And therefore, we can see 4 is output here. So the square root of 4 squared is 4. So in other words, the square root of x squared is 4. And what this Python program is doing is showing us that that is the case. Of course, I would at this point like to remind you 
of types. You see, if you look at this 4, it's clearly an integer. That's because we assigned it on this line as an integer. Here, we took that integer and we raised it to the power of 2 and stored that in x squared. Now, I haven't outputted x squared, but I would like you, when you finish watching this video, just to amend this program and print x squared to see whether, in fact, it'll be an integer or will it be another type. But what you can see here is 4.0, which is clearly a value of 4, but the fact there's a point 0 there means that it is an example of a float. So here, when I passed in the integer 16, what this returned to here was the float. Because when you pass in a number to a square root function, what you will get out, it will be type float. And in this case, the type float had the value of 4. Let's now consider this computer program. And it is identical apart from this line where you can see x has been assigned 16. So we come to here, this becomes 16 squared, which is 256. So this now has the value of 256. We come here, that 256 is passed to the square root function and we have to call upon the math module and of course what will be returned is 16 that's assigned to here. And of course what will be assigned to here will be 16 but in the form of a float and this will now output the appropriate strings and the values of x and the square root of x squared and we can see that here. So you can see the square root of 16 squared is 16. This is clearly an integer and that's clearly a float. Now what these two programs done, they've shown a concrete example of the following fact. The square root of x squared is equal to x. So let's now return to this here. And you can see I'm asking what's the square root of x squared equals the square root of 16 because this is the first step I take when I try and find one of the roots, one of the results for satisfying this here. If we consider the square root of the x squared, what that will give us is x. And we've just looked at two Python programs that have shown this to be the case. Two concrete examples. I would like you to take the following key points away from this video. The first one is shown here, that the square root of x squared is x. So if we had x being 4, 4 squared is 16, you then take the square root of 16 and you get 4. So in other words, the square root of x squared will always give you whatever the x is. The other thing I am interested in you remembering is this. If you have the square root of two numbers that are multiplied together, and here I'm representing those numbers with x and y, then you can split them up as shown here. And you can have the square root of x and the square root of y, so long as you multiply them together. Now a typical example to represent this idea is shown here. If I consider the square root of 6, I know 6 is 2 times 3, so I can put 2 times 3 here and take the square root of that, and that is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 3. Now, I would recommend that you use a calculator, find the square root of 6 and note it, then use the calculator again to find the square root of 2 and then the square root of 3 and then multiply those two values together and you should see you get the same result as the square root of of 6. Now just to remind you, I want you to note these key points down because later in the playlist we'll be referring back to them when we're considering complex numbers. And I would recommend, if you forgot all about indices, is it's a good idea to pick yourself up a maths book and just remind yourself of indices and particularly what x to the power a half is. I will however be covering indices in a video later in this playlist because they are essential for understanding complex numbers. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.